I started another wind turbine project, an experimental one. Still had unanswered questions from the last project because I didn't get any wind diverters on it. Hopefully I'll get some wind diverters on this one before it gets destroyed. And like the other wind turbines I made, it's going to be out of just readily available material that's as inexpensive as can be. The main thing that I learned from those last wind turbine projects is that you need to have some pretty good wind speed. It seems like it needs to be over 10 miles an hour up to 15 pretty consistently. You know, you can get a little bit of action at, you know, five, six miles an hour, but you really don't get much power. And the wind turbine needs to be a substantial size. The one I had built, the biggest one I had built previously was 12 foot in diameter, but that still, would, I think, would have been too small. I think probably need to be like maybe 16 feet in diameter and maybe 8 to 12 feet in length, plus wind diverters in order to get some decent uh, power out of it, I think. And so I'm continuing to experiment. This is the blade pattern that I chose to work with these black lines of eight curved blades. So they'll catch the wind and force it towards the center. This is one of the end plates. This is intended to be a vertical axis wind turbine. Right now I just got it set in between two sawhorses horizontally, so I'm not sure what you call it. But the construction is of two plywood circles. I cut these out of one sheet of plywood, so they're four feet in diameter. Just needed one sheet of plywood. And I went with five eighths because it was only two dollars more than half inch. And for the blades, these are six inch duct pipes that I got spread out a little bit. And this is they're five feet long. There's a label there if you can read that. And this center divider I have on here is just to keep them evenly spaced and maybe not rattle so much. This was just something I used from my other wind turbine, four foot wind turbine that got destroyed. I'll probably caulk this on here to hold it, maybe hot glue it on here to keep it steady. And don't have much wind right now. I'll probably have to move it on top of that hill and turn it into the wind. I'll probably experiment with this on the horizontal plane right now and figure out what's the best angle for wind diverters. But this is what I got going so far. I'm up here on my wind turbine hill and just got a little bit of breeze going on right now. I need to have this up a lot higher, but it is working just right now without any diverters. And my center axle is just a 5 8 inch rod that's six feet long threaded rod into some wheelbarrow bearings on each side and I'm just sitting on saw horses for right now but we are getting a little bit of action kind of fun yeah I'm gonna have to put this up quite a bit higher yet because right now well the wind is changing yeah, that's a hard thing about having the on the horizontal plane the wind keeps changing right now it looks like it's coming from this direction right here southeast a little bit more to the east i need to turn it but anyway it was working there for a little bit wind just died down so it, i don't know what the wind speed was but it was started picking up right away when the breeze came So we're getting some action at a low wind speed. Pick up a little bit more.
One thing about having this wind turbine on its side is trying to keep it balanced like a wheel. That's why you see a block of wood I have screwed on to the one end there. I tried to try to balance it out because it was wobbling a little bit. It wasn't balanced out good. And I still have a lot of work to do with this. I need to build some kind of frame support and a way to turn it into the wind. And what I want to use to generate power again is this uh, hoverboard wheel motor. These seem to work pretty good. It's pretty simple to do. I'll just have this wheel ride on one of those plywood ends. I'll probably have to build it a little bit thicker so it's got some good traction on there. But that's what I'm going to use for generating power. So when I test it, I can compare with and without deflectors. And so I'll continue working with this and experimenting. And I'd like to thank you for your time. And I'll see you in the next video.